Hello everyone, I am Apostle Michelle Peterson with Freedom Nation and today I am going to share with you um, a teaching that I did that the Lord gave to me and this teaching is about understanding God's heart. Um, one of the things that the Lord has told me is that people, his creation, humans, mankind, we don't understand his heart. And he wants us to understand his heart. And so this is what he uh, gave me to teach to his people. And these are his words. I have a lot of words from him. Um, these are his words. My heart has been open to mankind since the beginning. I want them to know my heart has never been closed to them. I want them to know that I care about them. They are my prize. Okay, so this is every person on the earth, uh, even the atheists, even the, the, the witches and the person that you feel like is the most evilest person ever. The Lord's heart has been open to them and all, all mankind since the beginning. And his heart has never been closed to us. Never, he says. Okay. Then he says, I want them to know my heart is open. <clears throat> and then I have a, a note that I put beside there. John 3.16. John 3.16 will help us understand God's heart towards all creation. And I'll just read that really quick. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now this right here says, for God so loved the world. That's the whole entire world. He loved this world so much. You know, it's saying here, his heart was never closed to this world. Never. He loved this world so much that he gave his only son so that we can actually have a relationship with him and be with him forever. Okay, so God's heart has never been closed to uh humanity his heart has always been open to us even from creation then here he says that we are his prize we are god's prize and so i asked the lord a little bit more about this um about us being his prize and this is what he said he said you are my prize i have chosen you you were created to be my people OK, we were created when Adam and Eve was created from the beginning. Um, we he, God created the whole human race to be his people in him, our God, not for us to rebel against him and, and not have a relationship with him. But he created us the way his plan was creating us for us to be his people, to have a, a whole, um, you know, race of family his family his people in him being our god okay and then when we go back to the relationship the first relationship with adam and eve in genesis 3 we're going to talk about this is something that the lord told me um, about adam and eve he said when we go back to genesis 3 and we're just going to read 10 through 13 but god said here whenever they had sinned in the garden and they hid from him this is what he said if they would have only repented if they would have repented and said we are sorry for eating the fruit we are sorry please forgive us the Lord said that he would have forgiven them but let's go there this is what happened they didn't repent uh, Genesis 3 10 and he said I heard the voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself this is Adam responding to the Lord and then he says and he said and the Lord said who told thee that thou was naked hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat and the man said the woman whom thou gavest to me to be with me she gave me of the tree and I did eat then 
the Lord goes down and he's talking to the woman. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. See, not one time when the Lord was asking them, Adam didn't say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. He put the blame on the woman. Basically, you gave me this woman, and she gave me this. And then so the woman didn't say, please forgive me. She put the blame on the enemy. The thing about it, the Lord's heart is so loving, so compassionate, so merciful. He said if they would have asked him to forgive them and repented, he would have forgiven them back then. And you guys, we would not be dealing with a lot of the stuff that we are dealing with. Creation would be totally different. But this is another thing the Lord said. He said whenever um, they had to leave the garden, he said that it broke his heart. His heart was broken when they had to leave the garden. And when he was showing me this, it's like I saw a vision. Um, I saw a vision of him putting clothing on them and having to send them out of the garden. But when he put the clothing on them, it was like a tender, really loving um, thing that you would do. Like if you have a child that is going to the military, you know, um, and you're giving them, you're putting their jacket on and they're about to leave to go to war. They wanted to, you know, fight. There's a war in the country and they want to go fight. Um, and, and they're of age, you know, to, to, um, to be able to make that decision, but you don't want to let, you don't want them to go because you know, it's dangerous out there. You know, they, they could die. It's a war, but you're honoring their will and their choice, their decision to go to war even though you know it's dangerous it's still their choice so you're putting their coat on and you're like loving them you know before they leave because you don't want them to leave because it's dangerous out there that's what i was feeling when i saw this vision of the lord clothing them you know because they had to leave the garden he he, he did not want them to leave it hurt his heart so bad that they had disobeyed him and they didn't even repent for it and so he told me that it broke his heart when they had to leave the garden okay so god's heart has always been open to mankind um he he's always wanted a relationship with his creation when you go back in the bible you look with abraham you know um the lord went you know throughout the whole bible god made covenants you know with people you know to have this relationship again with us you look at abraham god made a covenant with him um noah god made a covenant with noah uh moses god made a covenant with moses um moses uh the law was given to moses and the whole purpose of the law was to um the covenant of the law was to bring the people back to have a relationship with god um and the, the scripture says no one can come to the Father except through the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Lord Jesus Christ initiated this covenant with Moses and the children of Israel so that they can have an opportunity to have a relationship with the Heavenly Father. Um, because the covenant, basically when you're going through the covenant, um, uh, the law, you will see that it says that, you know, God, God is constantly saying, you will be my people and I will be your God. This is the covenant he's given them. Hey, th this is the law. You know, you, you do these things like a covenant. Um, my book that I have called The Mantle of Prosperity is a covenant book. There's two covenants in there that the Lord gave me that uh, people can actually enter into uh, these covenants with him. There's two. But covenants have requirements. You have to read the requirements and you have to agree to the uh, requirements to enter into a covenant. So the law was the requirements of the people. The people agreed to the uh, requirements um, of the law. And so they entered into a covenant with the Lord uh, through that. And so, um, but the covenant, this is also what the Lord told me. The covenant um was so that the people could actually have a relationship with the heavenly father now this is what the lord said they didn't understand the covenant um he said they didn't understand the covenant the covenant was about walking with god and having a relationship with god being holy um you know what a relationship looks like with him but they thought now this is what the lord told me they thought 
the covenant was only about being perfect. The law of Moses, they thought that covenant was only about being perfect. They didn't understand that the covenant was about the relationship with God. The relationship. So it turned into more of a law, more of works, not the relationship. It was no focus on the relationship with God. They didn't understand what the covenant was about. Okay. Um, and even today, a lot of Christians, we keep, um, you know, we, we try to live right. We try to do all of this stuff right. And we do all of this stuff without the relationship with God. But that is not the whole purpose of the, the covenant, this, uh, the new covenant. Jesus came both times. Both of these covenants was to have a relationship with God, for him to be our God and us to be his people, to have an intimate relationship with him, not just walking out uh, the commandments, but actually having a relationship with him. And so he told me that they did not understand this covenant. They didn't understand that it was about a relationship with him. Okay, and so um, Jesus came, like I said, to initiate the covenant, the new covenant with us so that we can actually um, have a relationship with the father. But the new covenant is a better covenant because it has some things in the covenant that wasn't in the um, the, the old covenant. Um, what we have now, we have authority over the enemy to use the name of Jesus. We have the blood of Jesus. Um, you know, we don't have to do the sacrifices and all the things that they used to have to do. And they could not cast demons out back in the days. Um, you know, that's why, uh, um, when, uh, certain sins was committed, uh, the only, you know, punishment was death, you know, because when you commit certain sins and those demonic spirits come inside of you, you know, back then they couldn't cast demons out. So if you were committing adultery and murder and all of this stuff and those demons of murder and lust and all that perversion came inside of you, you know, they couldn't get it out. So you had to be stoned to death so that those demons wouldn't be transferred to everyone. So but now with the new covenant, we have authority in the name of Jesus Christ to cast out demonic spirits. You know, we don't have to, you know, uh, deal with these things. No matter what type of life of sin you had, you can actually get all those demonic spirits out. If you worshiped idols, you can come to the Lord. You can get those uh, uh, idolatry spirits out. You know, all of the stuff that has entered you um, from uh, worshiping idols. Or if you committed adultery, you can get those um, those spirits out. You know, it's, it's a lot of things that we that makes this covenant, this relationship with the Lord so much better because um, we can actually get delivered. We can actually get free um, from, um, you know, the the enemy now and bondage can be removed from us. And so um, this covenant is so awesome um, that the Lord's given us. And um, something else the Lord shared with me. And um, another thing I want to add is that by us being able to get all these demonic spirits off of us after we've committed sin, this actually helps us to be able to really be able to worship God with a pure heart, to have a relationship with him, with him with a pure heart, to get our heart cleaned out from all the, you know, the evil things that we've picked up on this earth. And it helps us to be able to have a more intimate, pure relationship with God whenever we go through the deliverance process and use our authority to get the uh, the things removed from us. Okay. And this is something else that the Lord shared with me. He said, my pain is that they don't know me. My pain is that they don't know me. Okay. And you know, in the, um, in the Bible, the Lord talks about, um, about with this, uh, old covenant, you know, there, he, he basically says that, you know, it will no longer be where people have to tell others, know the Lord, know the Lord. He said that all will know him. All will know the Lord. And this is what he's saying. His pain is that people don't know him. They don't know him. They don't understand him. They think he's, you know, um, a bad God. They think that he's going out killing people and doing all these things because people are messing up. But that is not who he is. He is not attached to evil at all. He is pure. He's totally pure, totally love. You know, everything that's evil, all evil things come from the evil one. It comes from uh, the demonic kingdom. This is what the Lord says. He says, all evil comes from the evil one. 
God is not attached to anything evil. If there's anything evil going on in your life, never say God has anything to do with it. Never say God is punishing me. God is doing this because he is not attached to evil. If there's anything evil going on in your life, the enemy, there's some type of sin. There's something that gives the enemy a legal right somehow to be able to attack you in that area. But, you know, um, we God wants his people to, you know, he wants all creation to know him and understand that um, he is perfect. He is pure. He is love. And then the next thing he said, I want them to know my heart is pure towards them. I want them to know that my love is for them. I want them to open their hearts to me. And I really do truly believe that when we understand God, even even a little bit, if you understand his love, like how how intense and how perfect and how pure and how clean his love is, that he doesn't have no evil in him. I think if we can understand that part, that we will trust him. We will be able to, um, you know, open our hearts to him and and really believe him and feel safe um, no matter if everything is chaos going on around us when we really know God and know how pure his love is and and you know that his heart has never been closed to us and his heart is open to us I believe that it will be easy for us to open our hearts to God and to keep our hearts open to him at all times no matter what is going on around us we will still have peace because we know our God really loves us and that he's going to take care of us so this is uh, a teaching that I did and um, this is what the Lord um, wants people to know and understand his heart uh, understand his heart for all creation like I said if Adam and Eve um, the Lord told me if Adam and Eve would have repented, would, would have repented, just said they were sorry, God would have forgiven them even then. God has always been merciful. Repentance, you know, and grace, this isn't something new. God has always been graceful and merciful and loving and, you know, perfect, always from the beginning. So grace is not anything new. God has always um, had a pure, you know, loving heart towards mankind. So just know that. Just know his heart towards people and open your heart up to people also because God loves them and it will make it easier for us to love them also. So have a great day.